When it comes to companies re-releasing their games on a compilation or a collection, it's really between Atari, Namco, and <laughs> Capcom doing the most when it comes to re-releasing them. I mean, Capcom is no stranger to re-releasing their games on compilations and collections as they've been doing that since the 90s on the Sega Saturn and the PlayStation all the way up to the current era. And some people may feel some kind of way about that, but I personally don't because I grew up in the arcade era, so when they're re-releasing these games and I have the capability of getting them to play them again at home, I'm going to pick them up, even if it's a collection of games that were once on a home console, like the Mega Man Anniversary Collection or Legacy Collection or the Mega Man X Collection, like I'm mentioning a lot in Mega Man because I'm a Mega Man fan. Same thing with the Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection. Just I, I'm a fan of these compilations because for someone who grew up in that era, that's astronomical to me. Now, I can understand that the modern generation may not care about it because a lot of kids now that are grown up, when I say grown up, I mean like in their 20s, they didn't grow up in that arcade era. So that for them, what they're seeing is like, oh, these are old games. But for me, it's a nostalgia trip. And so we're back with another compilation collection, and that being Capcom Arcade Second Stadium. And... I love it. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a fan of Capcom, because clearly I am. As you can see, I've got the Capcom Home Arcade Collector's Edition right here. I'm, I'm one of the few that got sent this for review, and I absolutely love it. And yeah, I actually use it with this compilation. That's the thing that's really sick. So we're going to be talking about the Capcom Arcade Second Stadium and whether or not it's good average or if it's something that uh it's kind of overrated so without further ado let's go ahead and get into it this wasn't written with your comfort in mind nah made my decision wasn't tough to decide nah me and my boys we get it done every time <laughs> gotta earn it you can't just jump in the line you'll get rushed to the side i, I, I top my division i've been building since i started in the yeah. parking lot i parked it i came in while picking targets my career cannot be tarnished i'm a champion regardless celebrate but this is a different kind of lucha party we are not alike before we kick this video off i'm gonna give a huge shout out to capcom and the capcom creators program for providing me with the early access and review copy of capcom arcade second stadium and i'm reviewing the pc version i've been playing this on my gaming desktop as well as on steam deck and for me it's just sending me on a nostalgia trip because i grew up in this era and i really love being able to play these games again but here's the thing like having grown up in that era and now you know some 20 25 to almost 30 years removed from when a lot of these games came out it's kind of interesting to look on it and just objectively view it like hey this game wasn't that great or man this game was really designed to be a quarter muncher you know what i mean like it, it's we're at that point where it's like how much of this is really that good and how much of it is you looking through rose tinted nostalgia glasses so in this video, we're going to be talking about all the 32 games that are on here, what I think of the a la carte system, where you can get this for free with the base game of Sun Sun, and then buy different games that you want to add to your virtual arcade, and so much more. Before we do all that, if you enjoy the content I do, here's a general reminder for you to sub to the channel, ding the notification bell, that way you stay up to date on all the content I put out. If you enjoy the Steam Deck tutorials, PC reviews, tech reviews, and so much more, then hey sub to the channel if you want to support the content that we do we do have patreon as well as channel memberships the links for those in the description below so with that being said let's go ahead and dive into this compilation for capcom arcade second stadium the capcom arcade second stadium comes with 32 classic capcom arcade games which are sun sun savage beast gunsmoke the speed rumbler sidearms hyperdyne hisats buraiken Black Tiger, Street Fighter, Tiger Road, 1943 Kai, Last Duel, Rally 2011 LED Storm, Magic Sword, Three Wonders, The King of Dragons, Block Block, Knights of the Round, Saturday Night Slam Masters, Echo Fighters, Panikis, Dark Stalkers, The Night Warriors, Night Warriors, Dark Stalkers, Revenge, Street Fighter Alpha, Mega Man The Power Battle, Street Fighter Alpha 2, Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo, Mega Man 2 The Power Fighters, Vampire Savior The Lord of Vampire, Capcom Sports Club, Super Gem Fighter Mini Mix, Street Fighter Alpha 3, and finally Hyper Street Fighter 2. 
If you're feeling like there's some overlap of the titles from the Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection and the Capcom Fighting Collection, then yes, you would be correct. However, you should also understand that those collections are done very differently with the competitive scene in esports in mind with online rollback netcode. With this collection giving you the arcade ports in their original arcade glory for local play only with you having the option to get these games individually a la carte for your virtual arcade collection or as a complete collection. Having this be the first time the Saturday Night Slam Masters is released since the arcade and home console ports over two decades ago is truly amazing as that was one of the best arcade games from that era and best arcade wrestling games too. Having both Mega Man arcade games is truly insane as the last time we saw these released on the home console was with the Mega Man Anniversary Collection back in 2004 for the GameCube, PlayStation 2, and the original Xbox. And to be able to play them again on modern consoles is it's just insanely cool. If you were to get the second stadium in its free format, then you'd be able to download the shell of the arcade that comes with the 1984 Sansan game. And as you buy more games, the virtual arcade will start to get filled with more of the titles and they will be shown in alphabetical order. You're able to customize your cabinets by changing out the designs purely for the sake of cosmetics and having your arcade look how you want it to. You wouldn't assume this to be the case, but the virtual arcade is actually powered by Capcom's signature Resident Evil engine or RE engine. Every game in this collection is perfectly emulated with no noticeable glitches or issues that I could personally see. Adding some quality of life changes to these games like save states, rewind ability, game speed, and infinite credits was a brilliant and much needed decision as many of these games are incredibly difficult as many of them were made to be quarter munchers. Tiger Road and Black Tiger, I'm specific specifically looking at YouTube. You can change which region of the games you play, which changes the version of the games from either US or Japanese versions, which in and of themselves changes various aspects of these games given how they were changed during the localization process when they came overseas. There's also an online leaderboard for each of the games included, so you can see who has the highest scores in each of the games individually. What I love about this is that it kind of gives you that 80s, 90s arcade feel, especially for the newer generation who never got to experience arcades. As back then, we were all about who could get the highest score and being incredibly competitive with one another. Also, I really want to mention that the main theme that plays when you first boot up this game is an absolute banger. Let me just play it right here so you guys can hear it, and then we'll get back to the review. Customize each of the game's screen filters to incorporate scan lines and CRT style displays, along with being able to change the screen sizes by either putting them in full screen, widescreen, pixel perfect, or even stretch them out if you want it, along with putting games in Tate mode, also known as vertical scrolling mode, which is often used for shmups or shoot 'em ups, or upside down or inverted. There are custom borders for each game along with the ability to swap them out with a few others and view the games from an arcade view, which is on by default. That allows you to see the game and the arcade cabinet while using the right analog stick to look around the arcade cabinet and view the cabinets next to the one you're playing, as well as your layout for your sticks and buttons. As someone who grew up in the arcade era, this collection of games along with what we got in the first arcade stadium are some of the best from that era rivaled only by the likes of what Konami was making back in the day. As back then, it was always a back and forth between Capcom, Konami, and even SNK, which that was kind of regulated purely to the fighting game section. For the younger generation who weren't around or weren't born during this era, they may find some good times here with a lot of these games 
games. However, outside of the curiosity of wanting to dive into the company's portfolio of work, I don't see many of the newer generation diving into this collection and just saying that this is something that they've been looking forward to. What's also baffling to me is that many who are reviewing this collection are comparing it to the Capcom Fighting Collection and Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection and don't for some reason seem to understand that those two collections and this one are not at all the same, nor does this one have an online competitive component or rollback netcode for matchmaking. So you would think with games journalists, they would take more time to look into and actually do some investigative journalism to understand when some things are not the same, like this Capcom fighting collection and why you wouldn't compare the two because they're for two different audiences. But I guess if you're just getting this for review because the company gave it to you, hey, you're just putting out something because you need to. A lot of games journalists and content creators seem to do that, and it's just an unfortunate thing, but it is what it is. It's kind of how it is now when it comes to reviews. So, uh, yeah, this, the Capcom Fighting Collection, as well as the Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection, not the same. Not the same at all. Just keep in mind, one has online and rollback netcode, and one doesn't. So there you go. With all that is on offer here, Capcom Arcade Second Stadium is honestly one of the best gaming collections out there. And while I would have loved to have had games included in this collection, like Cadillacs and Dinosaurs, The Punisher, or Aliens vs. Predator, those are held back because of licensing issues. The 32 titles included in this collection Maya Street Fire 1, Sun Sun, and a couple others are all amazing games in Capcom's legacy of games and shows just why they were and still are a gaming juggernaut. And that's it. That's the review for Capcom Arcade Second Stadium. What are your guys' thoughts on this collection? Do you like it? Is it something you're looking forward to? Or do you find it lacking? Whatever your thoughts are, let's go ahead and get the conversation going in the comment section below. And also, shout out to Capcom for providing a review copy of the game for PC. I've really been enjoying my time with it, and honestly, a lot of that has to do with the fact, like I've been saying throughout this video, I grew up in this era. So so it hits differently for me. So with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, if you enjoyed the commentary, make sure you like the video and sub to the channel. It greatly helps us out. And if you want to help us out further, then we do have channel memberships as well as Patreon with links to everything down in the description below. All that being said, we also have merch on Teespring and TeePublic if you want to get some cool swag and help out this Hawaii local boy. And uh, other than that, I'm signing out. I hope you guys have an aloha, blessed the rest of your day. And uh, peace out, stay safe, and I'll see you on the next one. Mahalo for your time. If you found this episode to be incredibly enjoyable, informative, or if there's anything you gain from it or any insight or, you know, anything that's good that you really, really enjoy, make sure whatever platform you're listening to it on, or if you're watching it, leave a comment if that's available on the platform, like it, share it around with someone you think would enjoy it, and give us some feedback because your feedback is exactly what we need to keep this show going. And if you're wondering what are some ways that you could support the show we got various ways we've got patreon we have channel memberships over on youtube as well as subscribe star coffee and so much more links for everything will be in the description check that out and with all that being said i hope you have an aloha rest of your day let them know that i'm next level i'm a whole new kind of guy Is at the top spot in case you forgot. We the ones that got the black hot bullet got the shot. Yeah.